Hello everyone. In this lesson, we look at the proof of the Gauss-Markov theorem. So by the end of this lesson, you will understand the intuition behind the Gauss-Markov theorem. The Gauss-Markov theorem states that, given the assumptions of the classical linear regression model, the least squares estimators in the class of unbiased linear estimators have minimum variance, that is, they are blue. So practically, the OLS estimators should be 1. Linear, 2. Unbiased, and 3. Should have minimum variance. So we are going to prove these properties in respect of the Gauss-Markov theorem for the OLS estimators. So we are going to start with the slope coefficient. So what we are going to prove first is that this beta 2 is linear. And that happens to be the first property. The first thing that we need to have is the formula for calculating the slope coefficient, which is given by the sum of xi, yi, divided by the sum of xi squared. Now, we all know that this formula is expressed in deviation form. So the lowercase letter yi simply equals the uppercase yi minus the mean of y. So we need to go ahead and substitute this opened expression into the formula. So we are going to have sigma xi, then we open up the deviation of y to be yi minus y bar divided by sigma xi squared. And you may be wondering why we had to substitute the open expression of the deviation into this formula. This is because beta 2 should be a linear function of the dependent variable, not the independent variable. So because it is a linear function of the dependent variable, that is why we go ahead and open up the deviation of y, because y happens to be the dependent variable. So now at this point, we go ahead and expand the bracket. So we are going to have for the numerator sum of xi multiplied by yi minus the mean of y, which happens to be a constant, comes first, multiplied by sigma xi. And then we will go ahead and separate these terms. Each term is divided by the same denominator. So sigma xi squared and here sigma xi squared. Now you do realize that we have something. For example, we have the sigma xi, which simply is sigma, the uppercase xi from its mean. So the deviation of x from its mean. And we found out from our previous lessons that this deviation will sum up to zero. So this basically means that this term is going to be zero. And so the whole second term will become zero. So in that case, we will end up having beta 2 hat would be equal to sigma xi yi divided by sigma xi squared. Now, we are writing the same equation, but this time around, we are only separating the terms on the right because we want to introduce another variable in there. So what I'm going to have is for the numerator, we have this sigma symbol. Then we have the xi, then we have the yi, and that is divided by sigma xi squared. We have the same expression on the right, just separating out the sigma notation and that of the yi. So what we essentially trying to do here is to introduce another variable ki, which simply equals the term in the middle. So that is xi divided by sigma xi squared. In the end, our beta 2 hat is now equal to the sum of this ki then multiplied by yi. So we have proven that this beta 2 is now a linear function of the dependent variable. How do you see this to be kind of linear? You know that when it comes to the sigma k i y i we just simply removed the 
lower and the upper limit of the sigma notation but if we bring it here we are just simply looking at observations from the first value to the last value so if we go ahead and expand this sigma ki yi this practically is the first observation of k1 y1 plus because we are summing these terms k2 y2 plus all the way to the very last observation k n y n you can clearly see that we have the y i values here and it's associated coefficients k1 k2 all the way to k n this happens to be a linear function of the y i values the dependent variable now we proceed to the second property which we need to prove which happens to be the fact that this beta 2 hat should be unbiased so we are going to start with the the equation that proves the linearity of the slope coefficient which is beta 2 hat equals sigma k i y i so we would have our beta 2 hat equals sigma k i y i now you do realize that this y i is the population regression function so that simply is the intercept plus the slope coefficient multiplied by the independent variable plus the error term we are going to go ahead and substitute this population regression function into this equation we are now going to have beta 2 hat equals sigma k i and then we multiplied by beta 1 plus beta 2 x i plus u i when we have this equation we'll go ahead and expand the terms in the bracket multiply through by sigma k i so for the first instance we are going to have beta 1 sigma k i plus then we have beta 2 then multiplied by sigma k i x i and then plus the sigma k i times u i would be sigma k i u i now at this point you would go ahead and observe that this sigma k i can be written as sigma if you recall we let k i equal to this term that we have here so we are going to have sigma then the k i is x i divided by sigma x i squared you would again observe that for the numerator the sigma x i is simply x i minus x bar divided by sigma you can go ahead and also open up the deviation of x but um, the one we are actually concentrating on has to do with the numerator so what we observe is that this numerator is zero this numerator term is zero the sum of the deviation of x is zero we end up getting this to be equal to zero and then again if we grab the sigma ki and xi we will have sigma and then the ki is xi divided by sigma xi squared and then we multiply by xi as well when we have this we go ahead and write it together this way sigma xi uppercase xi divided by sigma xi squared now this at the numerator is the same as sigma xi minus x bar if we open up the deviation of x multiplied by xi divided by we also open up the deviation of x here so xi minus x bar squared and there is something that we need to consider here if you look at what is at the numerator let's extract that one alone out here so we are going to have sigma xi minus x bar multiplied by xi let's multiply the xi by the terms in the parenthesis so we have sigma and then we would have x i squared minus and then the mean of x multiplied by x i will be mean of x 
and then multiply it by this xi. Now we can distribute over the sigma symbol to the terms in the bracket. So we have sigma xi squared minus the mean of x comes out first because that is a constant. And then we have sigma xi. Now, if you recall, we have the term sigma xi to be the same as n x bar when we were looking at the derivation of the OLS estimate using the method of ordinary least squares, we introduced this kind of identity. So this is the same as sigma xi squared minus nx bar squared. If you recall from the method of ordinary least squares, you would realize that this sigma xi minus x bar all multiplied by this xi, which is now yielding this very solution here, it's actually the same thing that we had for, let me write it here. It's actually the same thing that we had for the sum of the square deviation of x. It also yields the same thing. These two terms, this fraction would actually be the same. And so this simply equal to one. In that case, we can now continue our equation from here. So our beta two hat will now be the beta one. We proved that the sigma ki equal to zero. So this is multiplied by zero and then plus the beta two multiplied by sigma ki xi equal to one and then plus our sigma ki ui. So once we have this result, our beta two hat now equals this term is zero and this term is gonna be beta two plus sigma k i u i. At this point, we introduce the expectation of the terms on the left hand side and that of the right hand side. So on the left hand side, we introduce the expected value of beta two hat. And that also equals the expected value of all the terms on the right. So we now have the expected value of beta two hat now equals now the expected value of this beta two because beta two is actually a constant. It is still going to be the same value. So beta two plus, but if we look at the term here, this is going to be the sigma K I remember that the K I values are simply the coefficients of whatever variable is there. So sigma k i, then we have the expected value of the error term. And if you recall from one of the properties that we looked at some time ago, we realized that the expected value of the residual or the error term simply equals zero. So that whole term now becomes zero. And thus the expected value of beta two hat equals the beta two. So here we are saying that the expected value of the OLS estimate of the slope coefficient equals the true value of the population parameter. So we have proven that this beta two slope coefficient is also unbiased. Now we proceed to the third property of the Gauss-Markov theorem, which is the fact that the beta two has minimum variance. So again, we start with where the beta two hat happens to be a linear function of the dependent variable. So I'm going to write it here. So beta two hat equals sigma k i y i. Now we are going to introduce the variance of the beta two hat. So the variance of the estimated slope coefficient. And that would be the same as the variance of the whole term, which happens to be on the right. So sigma ki yi. Now there is this property in statistics where we have a statistical property where if you have the variance of a constant term multiplied by a variable, this is going to be the same as the square of the constant term and then the variance of the variable itself. 
So that is a statistical property that we need to observe here. Remember, we said that the sigma ki, the ki values, are simply the coefficients of the dependent variable itself. So this sigma ki function like some sort of constant values. In this case, we will go ahead and use this statistical property to write the variance of beta 2 hat to be sigma ki squared. So we are just simply squaring the values of ki. And then we have the variance of the population y. Over here, we introduce the fact that the variance of the population y is the true variance we are looking for. We will have our variance of beta 2 hat now equals the sum of the squared values of ki and then multiplied by the true variance. Once we have this, we can now go ahead and open up the ki because we have already defined what the ki is. So we have the sigma term here. Now the ki squared is simply going to be xi divided by sigma xi squared. And all of this term, which is the ki, all of this term is squared and then multiplied by the true variance, sigma squared. At this point, this is actually going to be the same as, so the terms in this bracket is going to be for the numerator, we will have xi squared, and then we just simply bring this sigma notation to attach to this variable at the numerator. But then the denominator is going to be the sum of xi squared, and it is going to be the entire term squared because the square applies to the xi and that of the sigma xi squared. So this also multiplies the true variance. Now you would realize that the term in the numerator is the same as the term in the denominator. So this term cancels one of the terms in the denominator. All right. So in that case, Let's see if I can use an ink to show that. So this term will cancel one term, so the square term in the denominator. So in the end, we will end up getting the variance of beta 2 hat. Now it's going to be equal to 1 divided by sigma xi squared. And then that is multiplied by the true variance. So in the end, 1 multiplied by this true variance is simply the true variance divided by the sigma xi squared. And this happens to be the variance of beta 2 hat. So if you recall from the lesson on precision and standard errors of the OLS estimate, this was actually the variance of the slope coefficient which we showed in that lesson. And that has been proven here for the Gauss-Markov theorem property of minimum variance. But the question is, how do we know that this variance is actually the least variance that this OLS estimate can have? Essentially, what we need to do is rewrite this equation, rewrite this equation 1, into another form by introducing another arbitrary variable to replace this ki. So we will go ahead and write beta 2 remember it was hat so this time i would just go ahead and use star so beta 2 star because we are changing the variable here so we are just simply writing ci yi so you can see that that resembles exactly the same equation in this equation one just that we have now introduced another variable to replace the ki where this ci happens to be the same ki plus some constant or variable, whatever you call it, we are just introducing an arbitrary value for uh, this C. We just want to find out if we introduce some another term, is it going to have a lower variance than the one which we have estimated before? Or is this one rather going to have a lower variance than this one which we are introducing? That is exactly what we want to look at. We just want to confirm that the variance of the beta 2 hat here happens to be the one with the least variance. So based on this, 
if we also go ahead and find the variance of the beta 2 star, then that would be the same as the variance of this whole term, which happens to be the sigma ci yi. And then we know that this ci is simply going to be sigma ci squared, and then we have the variance of the yi just like we introduced that statistical property of the variance right here. Now we will go ahead and just simply replace the ci by the ki plus di and this term is squared and the variance of the population y is simply the true variance. In such a case we will go ahead and now expand the terms in the parentheses so we are going to have ki squared plus 2ki di plus di squared. And this is also multiplied by the true variance. Then we will distribute the sigma notation through the terms in the bracket. So we have sigma ki squared plus 2 multiplying sigma ki di plus sigma di squared. And this is multiplying the true variance. Where use is made of the fact that this sigma ki di can also be written as sigma. Now the ki term is xi divided by sigma xi squared. And this is also multiplying the di. So if we expand the deviation of x to be xi minus x bar, multiplied by this di divided by the sum of xi squared, then what this practically means is that, for example, if you have a numerical example of this OLS regression stuff, and you have in the table the deviation of x, we realize that all the values that you get under this deviation, if you go ahead and sum these values, you end up getting the result to be zero. What you are essentially doing by multiplying di with this deviation of x is, for example, this deviation is now multiplying another arbitrary term, which can be a constant. So you are essentially multiplying this term by this constant term all the way down to every single observation. So when this happens, if you still go ahead and sum the deviation of x multiplied by this di, you will still end up getting the result to be zero. So in this case, this shows that the sigma ki di is zero. So here we are going to get the answer to be zero. And when that happens, we now have the rest of the terms to be sigma ki squared plus sigma di squared multiplying the true variance. So we would see that the variance of beta 2 star now is going to be equal to if we multiply the true variance by the terms in the bracket we will have sigma ki squared then multiplying the true variance plus sigma di squared also multiplying the true variance and I do believe that we have seen this before. This is actually the variance of beta 2 hat. If we go back to the previous slide, you can see that we have the sigma ki squared multiplied by the true variance. And drilling down by opening up the ki term, you end up getting the result to be the variance of beta 2 hat. So this sigma ki squared multiplied by the true variance is nothing but the variance of beta 2 hat. So we are going to have the variance of beta 2 star equals the variance of beta 2 hat plus sigma di squared and then multiply by the true variance. So can you see what is happening here? The variance of the beta 2 star includes the variance of the beta 2 hat plus some arbitrary term. So it is very obvious that the variance of beta 2 hat 
is actually less than the variance of beta 2 star which shows that the beta 2 has beta 2 hat actually has the lowest or the least variance so it has the minimum variance that we are looking for so it has the least variance and so this third property of the gauss markov theorem that the beta 2 hat has the minimum variance is this exact proof that we have shown here so we can now go ahead and look at the proof for that of the intercept so now i would write here the intercept coefficient we will also start with the formula for calculating the intercept coefficient so that happens to be beta 1 hat equals the mean of y minus beta 2 hat x bar the mean of x let's rewrite it as beta 1 hat equals the mean of y minus now this i want to bring this mean of x first that is multiplied by our beta 2 hat so our beta 1 hat is the mean of y minus mean of x multiplied by now we substitute the formula for calculating the slope coefficient beta 2 so that is given by sigma x i y i divided by sigma x i squared again we would like to open up the deviation of y because for the linearity which i think i forgot to write here we are proving that the first instance the beta one is actually linear so we are saying beta one hat is linear that is the first property we are trying to prove from the gauss markov theorem so we now need to open up the deviation of y so we will have beta one hat now equals the mean of y minus the mean of x multiplied by sigma xi and then we have uppercase yi minus the mean and we divide this whole term by sigma xi squared now again our beta one hat is now equal to the mean of y minus now what is going to happen here is I have the mean of x here and i am going to separate this fraction into two terms by expanding the numerator so we are going to have sigma x i multiplied by uppercase y i minus then times the mean will become the mean of y multiplied by sigma x i and all of this term is divided by the sigma x i squared but there is something that I want to do here to make it very simple for both of us. So I want to separate each term to have its own denominator since they have a common denominator. So we have to separate them this way to make it very easy. In which case, it is very obvious that again, the sum of the xi, which happens to be the sum of the deviation of x, is zero. So the whole term in the bracket the second term in the bracket will become zero in the end we will end up getting our beta one hat to be equal to the mean of y minus the mean of x and that multiplies the sum of xi yi and then we divide by sigma xi squared now it is very obvious that we can see the dependent variable on the right hand side we also have the y bar and in this mean of y we still have the yi in there so let's open it up we will have beta one hat now equals the mean of y is given by the sum of yi over the sample size minus the mean of x multiplied by the term here and there is something that i want us to do at this point um, we do have for example the sigma so we do have the sigma yi divided by n and then we have our x bar then i separate this term so we also have the sigma again and then we have xi divided by sigma xi squared 
and I guess you get why I am separating this fraction from the rest of the terms because I want to introduce that new variable ki. So we also have the yi right here. At this point, it is obvious that on the right hand side, the fraction on the immediate left has the yi and the one on the right also has the yi. Definitely, we will have to factorize the yi out. Now, I would like to put this term in the bracket, but I will show you what is going to be put into this bracket. But first, I want to factorize the yi term out. You can also see again that we do have the sigma symbol in both terms. I also want to factorize that one out as well. And whatever is left for the first term, if we take the sigma yi out, then the first term is going to be 1 divided by the denominator is going to be n, then minus, then we have the x bar that is left and the sigma has been factorized, the yi has been factorized. What is left is the xi divided by sigma xi squared, which happens to be the ki which we introduced earlier. So when we have this instance, we can now see that the beta 1 hat is now a linear function of this yi, whereas the term on the left of the yi happens to be the coefficient of y. So from here, we have proven that the beta 1 hat is actually a linear function of the dependent variable. So that is the first property of the Gauss-Markov theorem for the intercept coefficient. But let's make it very easy for us where the ki is simply the xi divided by the sum of xi squared. So let's try to be very explicit by stating some of these variables that we introduce. Now we move on to the second property for the intercept coefficient. So the second property is that the beta 1 hat is unbiased. So we're also going to prove this one as well we will start with the same equation for where we proved that the beta 1 hat is linear. So that is sigma and then 1 over n minus. So the mean of x multiplied by ki, so mean of x multiplied by ki, and then we factorize the yi out as well. And we know that the yi is the population regression function. So beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus the error term. So we need to go ahead and substitute this into the equation. So we will have the sigma 1 over n minus the mean of x multiplied by ki. And then we will have beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui. Now we will have to take these terms in the bracket and the parenthesis and expand them. We will have beta 1 hat equals, we have the sigma term here. Now what is going to happen is we will go ahead and multiply the 1 over n by all the terms in the parenthesis. Then after that we will take the second term in the bracket which is minus x bar ki to multiply by the term in the parenthesis as well. So 1 over n, I would just, I, I normally like to have this uh, parenthesis. I normally like to write it as the bracket. So it looks much nicer, but you can use the parenthesis as well. So here we just have beta 1 divided by n. So if we multiply 1 over n by beta 1, then plus 1 over n multiplied by beta 2 xi will be the beta 2 xi also divided by n and then plus 1 over n multiplied by ui would be ui divided by n. So that is the expansion of the first term. Now the second term minus mean of x ki multiplied by, by beta 1 is going to be minus. So minus beta 1. 1 x bar k i and then this term also multiplied by beta 2 x i so that would be minus beta 2 then multiply by this x bar 
then we have the ki and then we have the xi and then this term again multiplied by the ui will be minus x bar then we will have ki multiplied by ui and then we close the bracket then our beta one hat is now going to be now we distribute the sigma notation through the terms in the bracket beta one over n are both constant values for this fraction so sigma beta one over n is going to be n multiplied by beta one divided by the same n then plus the second term we will have the beta two come out and then the sigma x i and that is also divided by the n plus this term we will have the sigma u i divided by the n then here we will also have the beta one which is constant it will come out with the mean of x and then we will have the sigma ki then this term minus beta 2 x bar then we will have sigma ki xi minus our x bar then the sigma ki ui we can clearly see that this n will cancel this one here so we are going to have the result to be but before that okay we have some terms here the sigma ki will be zero and the sigma ki xi will be equal to one how did we know this because we have proven that already when we were doing that for the slope coefficient so we saw that the sigma ki equal to zero and sigma ki xi equal to one and then we can also see something else here as well we see that the sigma ui is also equal to zero the sum of the error term is zero so all of these properties that we have learned before are now coming to bear fruits we now have beta one hat equals the first term is now going to be beta one plus the second term is going to be beta 2 then sigma xi divided by n is simply the mean of x this term is 0 this term is 0 now this term was equal to 1 so we will have minus beta 2 the mean of x as well and then the last term is simply going to be x bar sigma k i u i so you can see that we now have the second and third terms on the right hand side to be the same and one is positive the other is negative so they cancel out so we are going to have our beta one hat now because the beta one minus our x bar sigma k i and then u i once we have this we can now go ahead and introduce the expectation of these terms so we will have the expected value of the term on the left and then we also have the expected value of the whole terms on the right when this happens we are now going to have the expected value of beta one hat now equal the expected value of the population parameter is the same value and then minus the mean is constant this sigma ki is also the coefficient of this variable ui so the expected value will apply to this ui random variable and we all know that the expected value of the error term is also zero so in which case we go ahead and write the expected value of beta one hat now equals beta one so now we have shown that the beta one hat is also unbiased since the expected value of the estimator equals the true value of the population parameter then we move on to the very third property which happens to be beta one hat has minimum variance so again we have to write down the equation for when we proved that the beta one was actually linear so that was given by 
sigma 1 over n minus x bar ki then multiplied by yi. At this point, we want to go ahead and find the variance of beta 1 hat, which would then be the variance of this whole term, that is the sigma 1 over n x bar ki yi. The coefficient of y, remember from the property, the statistical property that we observed before, if you have the variance of a and the variable x, then this is actually going to be the same as a squared and then you do have the variance of x. In which case now the variance of beta 1 hat is now going to be equal to the sigma and then we have 1 over n minus x bar ki this value squared and then we would have the variance of yi but we know that the variance of the population y is the true variance we are looking for so we are going to have sigma 1 over n minus x bar ki squared and then we have the true variance which is sigma squared now at this point we want to expand the terms in the bracket because that is squared so we will have the sigma now 1 over n squared is simply going to give us 1 over n squared and then 1 over n multiplied by this term is going to be x bar ki and it is minus already divided by this n and that is also multiplied by the power which is 2 so we have 2 x bar ki divided by n and then this term if we square that term is going to be plus we will have x bar squared and then ki squared and that multiplies the true variance so if you expand the terms in the bracket this is what you get and then we can now distribute the sigma notation through the terms 1 over n squared is still a constant so sigma 1 over n is going to be n over n squared not forgetting the fact that there is a square bracket then minus the 2 is constant the mean is constant we just simply apply the sigma notation to the arbitrary variable ki divided by n then plus the mean x squared then we do have the sigma ki the sigma ki squared and then multiplied by the true variance so we now know that the first term in the brackets n over n squared the n will cancel one of the terms our variance of beta 1 hat is going to be equal to so the first term will be 1 over n and then the second term what you can see here is that we also have sigma ki in this term which we know the answer to be zero so sigma ki is zero so the second term will disappear and then we have the last term so we have plus the mean of x squared and then sigma ki squared and then all multiply the true variance now let's go ahead and expand the ki squared because we know what the ki represents so plus we have the mean of x squared then we have sigma so the ki is xi and okay so let's do it like this divided by sigma xi squared and that term k is squared we multiply by the true variance so this now equals 1 over n plus the mean of x squared then xi squared so we have the sigma term there so it's going to be sigma xi squared and the denominator will be sigma xi squared all squared and then we multiply by the true variance so in this case we will now have 1 over n plus the mean of x squared and 
the numerator sigma si squared will cancel one of the terms in the denominator. So we will have the answer to be 1 over, so 1 over sigma xi squared will be the same as this, if I write it like that. And then we have sigma squared. So at this point, we will choose the least common multiple of the terms, uh, the fraction terms in the bracket. We will have n multiplied by x i squared so these are just the denominator terms and what happens is that this n will go into this term sigma x i squared so the sigma x i squared will now multiply the numerator here so we have sigma x i squared and then plus this sigma x i squared will also go into the denominator term n times so this n will multiply the numerator of that fraction as well and then all of this is multiplied by the true variance once we have this let me go ahead and rewrite this one because it is very important where we have reached so we have the variance of beta 1 hat now equals so we do have sigma x i squared plus n x bar squared divided by n sigma x i squared then multiplied by the true variance there is something wonderful that we need to also observe here which is very intuitive and we need to introduce that to understand what this is all about for example we know that the sum of x i squared which is the sum of the deviation the sum of the square deviation of x is the same as sigma x i minus x bar squared and if we go ahead and expand the term in the parenthesis we are going to have x i squared minus then 2 x bar x i then plus x bar squared so we now distribute the sigma notation through the terms in the bracket so at this point i'm just simply using the bracket and the parenthesis uh, interchangeably so plus then the sigma uh, mean of x squared mean of x squared is simply a constant term so the sigma will tend to n so n multiplied by this term and we also know that the sigma xi squared minus 2x bar this xi this sigma xi is the same as nx bar which we have introduced before in our previous lessons and so we will end up getting sigma xi squared minus 2nx bar squared plus nx bar squared. And the last two terms are like terms. So we will have the answer to be xi squared minus nx bar squared. And we know that this equals the sum of the square deviation of x. So at this point, you know what we have to do? We need to just send this term. We have to transpose this term to the left hand side. So we will have sigma xi squared, then plus n x bar squared, and that is going to be sigma xi squared. Now, can you observe what happens to be the numerator of the variance of beta 1 hat? You can see that the numerator is exactly the same thing that we found on the left hand side when we expanded the sum of the square deviations of x. So all we need to do is that sigma sum of square deviations of x plus nx bar squared all equal to sigma uppercase xi squared. So in this regards, we are simply going to have this implies that the variance of beta 1 hat now equals the sigma uppercase xi squared and this divides n multiplied by the sigma of the the sigma of the square deviation of x and then that multiplies the true variance so is this looking a little familiar Yes, because this is the formula for calculating the variance of the 
intercept coefficient when we looked at the precision and standard errors of the OLS estimates in that very lesson, this is what we had. Once you might have proven the variance of the intercept coefficient and that of the slope coefficient, you can actually take the square root of this term to get their corresponding standard errors, which I did not do for the slope coefficient, but you can actually do that. Once you have the variance here, you can go ahead and take the square root. So let me use a different color. So the standard error of beta 2 hat is simply the square root of the variance of beta 2 hat. So this would mean that we just need to take the square root of the true variance divided by sigma xi squared. And the true variance will cancel the square root term because the square root term is distributed over every single term in the fraction. So that is going to be the standard error of estimate divided by the square root of sigma x i squared. So it looks very familiar. Uh, just simply take the square root of the variance and you get the standard error of the variance. So we will just proceed with what we are doing. Now that we have the variance of beta 1 hat, we can also go ahead and prove if this one has a lower variance in case we try to introduce a new term, an arbitrary term. We will proceed again with now we had the beta 1 hat when we proved that equation for linearity. We had sigma 1 over n minus the mean of x multiplied by ki and then this yi. So what we have to do is we now introduce a beta 1 star where we simply go ahead and replace the ki with another variable ci where this ci is simply the ki plus some arbitrary term di just to use this to try and prove the variance of beta 1 star and compare with the beta 1 hat to see which one has the lowest variance when this happens we can also go ahead and introduce the variance of beta 1 star and that would mean that we just simply have 1 over n minus this term squared. And then we have the variance of yi when we apply the status graph property of the variance. So in this case, we will now go ahead and have 1 over n minus this. And then multiplied by the true variance. Now, from here, we can proceed by just expanding the terms in the bracket. So 1 over n squared is going to be 1 over n squared because 1 squared is still the same 1. And then minus 2x bar ci also divided by n because we multiply these two terms in the bracket and multiply by the power, which is 2. And then the last term we square the terms so we'll have the mean of x squared and then ci squared and that also multiplies the true variance so at this point we will go ahead and distribute the sigma notation through the terms in the bracket that would be sigma 1 over n squared because 1 over n squared is a constant is going to be n over n squared and that will give you 1 over n and then we have minus minus 2x bar and then sigma c i divided by n and actually this is minus and then plus the mean of x squared and then we have the sigma c i squared and all of this multiplies the true variance it follows that by convention sigma ki was found to be equal to zero so sigma ci will also be equal to zero and that could be proven but we just introduced this by convention to make it very easy for us 
So in that case, we are simply going to have one over n and then plus the mean of x squared, sigma c i squared, and then we have this term. Now the variance of beta one hat, sorry, this one is gonna be the beta one star. So the variance of beta one star now equals, now this is what we should do. We have one over n plus, now we're going to have the mean of x squared and then we will have the sigma, then the ci term, we open it up and we know that the ci was defined to be equal to ki plus di and the ci is squared, so we have that multiplied by the true variance. We will now have one over n plus the mean of x squared, then sigma ki squared, if we try to expand di squared like this, multiplying the true variance, then we have one over n plus this term. Then we can now distribute the sigma terms to each term in the parenthesis. So two sigma ki di plus sigma di squared and then multiplied by the true variance. So at this point, the sigma ki di equal to zero. And I could also introduce this by convention, but in case some are wondering why it is equal to zero, the ki is xi divided by sigma xi squared. And this is multiplied by the di. And this is the same as sigma xi minus x bar di divided by sigma xi squared. Now what happens is that in a given table, we find out that the sigma xi minus x bar equal to zero. And if this xi minus x bar is multiplied by any arbitrary number, any arbitrary constant di, if you go ahead and still take the sum of this, you will still end up getting the result to be zero because this is basically just being multiplied by a particular value. So you will end up getting the same zero. So this would mean that, so this term equals zero. So we are going to have one over n plus the mean of x squared multiplying sigma ki squared plus sigma di squared and then multiplying the true variance. We are now going to have the variance of beta one star Let's rewrite the same term here. Now let's confirm if that is exactly what is there. Great. So now that we have this, we can now proceed by going ahead to have one over n plus, and then we just expand the term in the parenthesis. We multiply by the mean of x squared. So we will have sigma ki squared, then plus this term squared, sigma di squared, and then all will multiply the true variance. We can now go ahead and open up the sigma ki squared. So we will have one over n plus the mean of x squared, and that would divide by sigma xi squared 
plus this term all multiplied by the true variance. So you would observe that this term actually was proven before. So I just went ahead and did it straightforward. So in case you are wondering how I managed to get that, then that is exactly what I did. So at this point, I would go ahead and separate the first two terms and multiply by the true variance whilst the last term will also multiply the true variance. So you would observe that this term on the left hand side is exactly the same thing we had for for this term here. So you can see that is exactly what we have here. So we can proceed through this step when we're proving the minimum variance for the intercept coefficient. And we ended up getting the results to be this, which happens to be the variance of beta one hat. So it's very straightforward from there. That is why I had to take you back to what we did instead of trying to write everything. So this basically is going to be the sum of uppercase xi squared divided by the sample size multiplied by sigma si squared and then multiplying the true variance then plus this other term that we have here. So you can see that when we introduce some arbitrary variable ci, we realize that So we have the variance of B star now equals the variance of beta one hat, then plus this second term that we find here, which is a positive value. And so we can clearly say that since the variance of beta one hat is actually less than the variance of beta one star, then it follows that beta one hat has minimum variance. And thus is an efficient estimator. So this is the proof of the gauss markov theorem for the OLS estimators. In the next lesson, we will look at the coefficient of determination which happens to be a measure of the goodness of fit of regression models.